Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Maine Castillo. I'm Town Hall's Program Manager. On behalf of Town Hall Seattle, it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's live streamed listening party with cellist Lori Goldston and singer Jordan O'Jordan as a part of our arts and culture series. As we get underway, I would like to acknowledge that our institution stands on the unceded traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, particularly the Duwamish. We thank them for our continued use of the natural resources of their ancestral homeland. Thank you all for tuning in. Town Hall is proud to be a community focused organization and a place where we can share and sustain ideas and creativity, even if it means we can't gather in person. I'd like to thank all of the performers appearing tonight to help make that possible. Town Hall will continue to produce virtual content as we enter this new year, including our podcast in the moment, which features exclusive guests. And many of our past talks are available in video or podcast form in our digital media library. Town Hall is adding new events and podcasts every day. Upcoming programs include Kahindi Andrews in conversation with Russell Brand, discussing the ways that anti-Black colonialism informs our modern world. A studied look into the impact of retail behemoth Amazon on our country with Alec McAgills and Margaret O'Mara. And Nicholas Friedenberg is joined by Mark Bittman to discuss capitalism's role on our health along with appearances by Annabelle Gerwich, Cass Sunstein, Pramila Jayapal, Nathan Rich, and Claire Vi Watkins. Check out more of what's coming up at townhallseattle.org. Town Hall has been put under significant strain due to the ever-changing landscape. We hope you will consider extending your generosity to help support us during this difficult time by making a donation by clicking on the donate field in the left menu. You can also become a member by clicking the my membership field in the left menu. Thank you for your support. An important note for tonight's event, a portion of ticket sales will go to benefit both the White Center Food Bank and Central Texas Food Bank at the request of the artist. If you'd like to donate directly to those causes, check out the links in the chat below the video player. Tonight's program will be just over an hour, including conversation and video recordings. Questions will be selected from those in the chat field at the bottom of the video player, so please submit those at any time. We cannot guarantee that we'll be able to address every question, but we'll try to get to as many as possible. Please keep your questions concise and in the form of a question. For those who would like to view the program with closed caption, click the CC button in the bottom right corner of the video player. The program will be available for rewatching immediately following the event. Town Hall's work is made possible through your support and the support of our sponsors. Our Arts and Culture series is supported by Four Culture, Arts Fund, Seattle Office of Arts and Culture, the Norcliffe Foundation, and Wincoat Foundation Northwest. Finally, Town Hall is a member-supported organization, so I'd like to thank all of our members watching tonight. Jordan O. Jordan is a fifth generation Appalachian from Pike County, Ohio. He has spent the last 15 years as a queer tromboner, banjo player, singer, and scientist touring worldwide as a solo musician or as a part of the folk trio Polka Dot Dot Dot. He has released six full length records, two EPs, and one children's book, Mountain Lullaby, in collaboration with the UK's We Heart Arts nonprofit. His art and science work has been featured in the New York Times and on National Radio New Zealand. Lori Goldston is a cellist, composer, improv improviser, producer, writer, and teacher based in Seattle. She plays locally and tours internationally as a soloist and in collaborations with bands, composers, choreographers, filmmakers, and writers. Her current and former collaborators include Earth, Nirvana, Mariah, Dylan Carlson, Kane Mathis, Stuart Dempster, David Brin, Clyde Peterson, Timothy White Eagle, among others. She has performed original work at venues throughout North America, Europe, and Australia, including the Kennedy Center, Sydney Festival, TBA Festival, Northwest Film Forum, Tectonics Festival, Fry Art Museum, and On the Boards. We are very excited to offer this listening party tonight with them. Their new album, Very Old Songs, is out, out now. Please join me in welcoming Lori Goldston, Jordan O'Jordan, and the other performers joining them to celebrate tonight, JR, Tomo, Phil, and Jessica. Operator error. Hi, thanks for being here. Um, I am really excited to offer this album to the world and finally get it out. 
um, uh, self-released, so kind of a big um, adventure of commerce that way. I'm going to lay out the evening a little bit. It's in the, um, there's a sort of a program in the chat. I uh, wanted to thank first uh, Megan and Candice and Josh and everyone at Town Hall for having us and uh, to Shinyi for um, kind of laying the groundwork for it to happen and having the idea, which I just need to be told practical, obvious things sometimes. Um, it was a great idea and I'm so happy to be together with everybody and to see all these um, friends of mine who will uh, be chatting and presenting work. And uh, I'm really, it, I'm chomping at the bit to do shows with all of them and more, uh, hopefully soon. I wanted to thank Lee Cox who made the videos for um, the songs from Very Old Songs that you'll see tonight. And also the really beautiful um, promo drawing that was done from uh, a photo that our friend uh, Jody Poor will take. Um, Mel Detmer, who recorded the album and mastered it. Um, uh, Jordan's brother Adam, who cut the lacquer, and Sue Ann Harkey, who did the beautiful layout. The, um, we're going to have some conversation, and um, I'm going to, I already have a question for Jordan, but I'm going to tell you first what's going to happen tonight. Um, so we'll see, we'll chat, we'll see some videos, we'll chat a little more and see some more videos. If there's time, we'll see one last one. We'll see how the time goes. The order's in listed, um, and I'll tell you also. Um, so the first set is uh, Clyde Peterson, then a song from Jordan and my album, um, Dreadful Wind and Rain, then a song by uh, Jessica Kenny, who's here, and a song by J.R. Rhodes, who's also here. Clyde's not here because it's windy out on the little island where Clyde is, and the internet's spotty at best. A little break, then um, Phil Elfram, and a song from Very Old Songs, Lowlands, and um, then Tomo Nakayama, then we'll see what's going on. Maybe we'll do another after that. We'll see how the chatting goes. Um, before I write, before I ask, dig in with the questions, I'm gonna start with this essay. I've been really liking essays. Whoever thought I would like essays, but I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring. Thanks for joining us for this launch of our album, Very Old Songs. Its seeds were sown during nerdy conversations while Jordan and I were on tour with Clyde Peterson. Eventually I said, we should start a band. Once we sat down to play together, right away it sounded pretty much exactly the way you hear it on the record. These songs arrived through a long, long chain of musicians via records, radio, dark nights, sunny days, books, concert halls, the internet, and all manner of human transportation over land and water through good and awful times. They're ephemeral and delicate and tough and weedy. Tonight's singers are all dear friends of mine, and for me, their work feels very much part of the continuum of this repertoire, each in different ways. Songs and singers carry information about the past and present singers, maybe about the future ones. The composer, the places where they've traveled and about loss, love, resilience, cruelty, tenderness, impulsive, impulsiveness and patience. 
among millions of other things. There's too much to say about these songs, but I'll point out a favorite feature, the cinematic storytelling zooming in and out of wider focus on the air, season, and topography, and then to something small that's either part of or touched by a character, a comb, a shirt, a cheek, or shining teeth. Uh, do you want to say anything, Jordan, before I start grilling you? <laughs> or vice no. Versa? No, that was very beautiful. Um, Thanks. Just one, one tiny thing, one tiny correction. The videos that for our songs are by Rachel Howland. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yep. Sorry about that. Okay. Correct, but um, that's the one thing I want to say. But yeah, uh, you can you can grill away, Lori. <laughs> If you have a specific question, I'm happy to uh, pontificate on it. Making that correction here. Okay. Um, well, we had done this little interview earlier. And so I, you had, I was, I love hearing about your connections to those songs and your history. Mm. Um, so if you could. Tell me about that. That would sure. Be yeah, yeah. I also uh, was wondering. The, while I was thinking of my other question, had to do with the graphic on the cover. Oh, sure. Anyway, those. Yeah, are I, yeah. I'll I'll tell a little bit about the graphic if you want. So Please. last year, um, after when we were sort of talking about this album, we were also talking about these songs as very old, sort of traditions and also this sort of magic that goes with them. There's a power to these songs. And um, I was trying to think about images and rituals and traditions that maybe go along with some of these songs a little bit. And um, I have a really good friend, Colleen Johnson, and we were talking a lot about ritual magic and sort of European ritual magic. And she was talking about sigils. It's like a sigil is a, like a magical symbol used used to make things or manifest things. And um, I was sort of looking in the world for a, a sigil or a sign. And those marks that became the art were a set of raindrops on my windshield that I saw after I had come out of a, I had a MRSA infection in my knee that got really serious. And I had to go into the hospital and basically one day we were tending to the wound and like I was in World War I, they packed the wound with iodine-soaked cotton and I didn't have any anesthetic. And it was one, a very intense experience that brought on an incredible amount of pain and subsequent euphoria. And I think I was a little high uh, and I saw those raindrops on the windshield and I felt moved. It felt like a, uh, some, like a message from the angels. Something that opened up. Yeah, entirely. And that moment, that I felt like what happens, what ecstasy and euphoria can come from deep, terrible pain and what beautiful things can be made. And it seemed really appropriate for these songs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I guess that, that I'll, I'll say a little bit about my per personal connection with them too, because that's, that's part of it. So I grew up like in the intro set, I grew up in Appalachian, Ohio. My family had been there for a very long time. Um, I think I was the fifth generation to grow up on the plot of land that I did. And my family was both musical and not. So my parents didn't necessarily play music, but my aunt and uncle did and my grandma did. And the funny thing about a lot of these old songs is they were the songs that got played in the church basement. You know, like a lot of old time and a lot of bluegrass and a lot of gospel all got mixed together. And when I was a kid, like I hated it. I wanted punk music. I wanted goth music. Like I just wanted to listen to The Cure and like listen to Liz Fair and thought my parents were so stupid. And my grandparents like, oh, what do they even know? Um, but there was still something about these songs that I could never forget. What appealed to me about them that was so interesting I heard them most in a very white Christian context. So these sort of songs would be interspersed with bluegrass gospel songs 
you know, think like Ralph Stanley kind of stuff. Um, and what was really interesting to me is the logic of these songs and the kind of worlds of these songs don't seem Christian at all to me. They have these stories and that are just outside of any sort of moral. Um, or if they or if they are Christian, they speak to sort of a hellfire and brimstone Christianity. These kind of like Old Testament. You don't know what God's going to do, but you'll be struck down. Who you know? You know, like. So that was, um, and my goth sensibility just loved it. I love the idea of all these ghosts coming back for revenge or just things being wrought upon a body that would be continued through the ages. And these songs, what I love about them is they speak to the continuity of existence, both good and bad. On this, on this record, there are lots of ghosts you know, and that speak to very beautiful and heart-wrenching emotions. And that's my, that's why I love them. That's why I was really stoked when we, we started nerding out about it. And it turns out we both love these folk songs and it really did come together in such a auspicious way. It's a delight. I'm so excited to be here with everybody tonight. It's a, a true honor. It's really, yeah, it's wonderful to, uh, talk about them and sort of work, uh, work them over and figure out um, kind of go over nitpick sort of details of different versions and that kind of thing. And then, I mean, that kind of dovetails, I guess, with what I've been talking about with JR about them, about um, these songs really demanding that you uh, own them and do your own version of them. You can't really imitate somebody else's version, it doesn't work somehow. You have to really um, figure out where your kind of point of intersection is with these songs. So it's, uh, it requires a lot of talking about them, which is a total pleasure, but to sort of figure out where you're gonna land with them and what, um, what you have to say about these songs individually or collectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love what you said about like zooming in and zooming out. I think there's a real visceral nature to all of these songs. Like there's always mentions, even in these ghost songs, there's nearly always mention of a body with the ghost, which I think is like an interesting point of reference. So they're, they're well, really I think that's why they last so long is because they <laughs> are sort of using people, not just people's sort of voices and um, repertoires, but people's bodies as vessels for them. I think they have a kind of a life of their own. Everybody's evolved around songs, really. Um, well, if we're gonna stay with this um, kind of set, I like the air, a lot of air quotes, cause it's, yeah, I don't know, what are we doing here? Uh, that um, format, then I would ask JR, I guess, about what you, um, well, I can thank you each and for one thing. Thanks for doing this. And um, I'm one, I would love to hear about your um, kind of process with figuring out these songs which was really nice to talk about and kind of get talk in length and sort of get little texts sex clues about as we were going um are you muted you're muted if you feel like chiming you don't have to <laughs> God, I'm really feeling for all the teachers in the world right now. This is just so <laughs> awkward. God bless them. Anyway, sorry. Can you hear me? Is it, yeah, I... yeah. Yeah, this has been a complete trip, right? And it's like this wonderful, the timing is perfect too, because Lori, we've talked about it. Like I'm the last one standing in my core family, right? So at this time I'm going through the last 30 boxes of my family's like memorabilia. And at first it was like a huge like weight, right? This grief thing. And now it's like shifted 
you know, through me, like meditating my ass off, I'll just say right there, like um, shifting it to like this really, I like, I feel so grateful. Like, I feel like I get to curate my family's life and it's part of me. Like all I like, I get to honor my family's legacy and all these pieces of them are pieces of me, you know? And, and it's kind of like what this is about. Like this thing has tripped me out. Like, cause like you sent me like a bunch of songs, you know, that, right? And I'm like, and it totally like, like brought my inner librarian. I was like, woo, you know, it's all about it. And so I was like, woo. And I was totally nerdy on all the songs. And you kept checking in with me. I really appreciate it. Cause it's like, I could have completely gone through the wormhole. <laughs> Like, where are we at? You know? yeah, a little. <laughs> right? And then so like I finally decided on black as the color, you know, and you sent me like these three versions. It's like Jean Ritchie, Nina Simone, and John Joan Baez. And it's just like I was like, whoa, you know, and then I listen, 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 listen. That's how I learn. I just repeat things over and over again. And so real quickly, like, so like you know, I tend to wake up at four o'clock. I'm twilight girl, right? So like I woke up at four o'clock in the morning after like all this listening and I was just like, whoa, it's just like, I can't do this. Can I do this? Whatever. I was just like, really like in the middle of it. And I was just like, and I was just like, first I was like, can I be, can I do it as good as they did it? And I was just like, it's bigger than that. And that's what tripped me out. It's bigger than that. I was just like, and I was like, no, it's not about that. It's totally not about ego. It's about like, adding my sh it's about like you're saying like showing up it's like this this music uh it's a it's like a human thread it's like it's like you've got to fully show up it's like there's no ego it's not like you can put it's not like a cover song which is like i'm gonna do my fancy version of this it's like no it's like it's about representing right and fully showing up and adding your patch to this sonic quilt and it just tripped me out when I got that. I was just like, no, it's not about ego. It's not about, it's not about contest because none of us have anything to prove. We all are worthy. We all breathe the same air. We are like deserving by birthright. And it's like not about competition because it's like, it's about like adding our, like you say, Lori, your stamp on something. And it's just like showing up and representing and moving it forward. And so I've learned so much from this, like Jessica, I've, I've gotten to study with Jessica Persian music and like, and I, you know, learned so much about like how beautiful, like, like history, like what it means, you know? And, and that's the only other thing, like studying with Jessica Persian music and like studying like spirituals. And the, the key thing for me is it's like, what I get so far anyway, is it's like, it's about moving humanity forward. It's about like really showing up. It's not about like, show, you know, it's not like I'm, you know, it's like I'm going to do this folk song. It's not, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> so much more. So like, it's really interesting because I've known that and I've practiced it and I've like studied it and stuff. But for some reason, I think it's because of where I'm in my life with like, you know, curing my family stuff. It's like, I, you know, like the beauty and the power of history and how much it means for all of us, right? Know thyself. It's like really powerful. The more you know about where you've come from, whatever that looks like, you know, and it's like my, my past isn't perfect, you know, but like being willing to look at it and to learn from it, like what, you know what I mean? I ask myself empowering questions these days. It's like, what is the lesson in this, you know? So this this whole thing, this has been the most beautiful, like the timing of this, like, thank you both, like Lori and Jordan. Like this has yeah. just been like a surprising thing. Like when I woke up at four o'clock in the morning, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I, was just like, I was like, really, I'm learning, like I'm embodying what I've intellectually known and which is, which is different. I didn't know I had all that to say. Thank you for this. Oh, it's so nice. I knew you did. So that's so what I... <laughs> I'm like, well, I surprised myself. I just. Um, 
Jessica, you wanted to read a poem, and then you also have a lot of things to say. You want to do that now, before the song, or after the song? Well, it might make more sense right before the song, but I can read it now. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's great. Um, wow, I just, I'm so moved by everything you just said, JR, and... Um, and also just to think about you um, singing the poetry of Hafez uh, to me, sitting outside of Cornish, you know, on, just out by the sidewalk, doing our lesson out there, just, it's just like the, yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, I'm so moved. Um, I just want to read this poem that I feel like comments on the lyrics of the song that I um, that I sang for tonight, but it's a, a poem by a, a 12th century Korean monk. And it's supposed to be like this really, really obscure poem. Like nobody can really figure out what it means. Um, oh God, my computer's gonna run out of batteries. Um, okay, hopefully I can do this before that. So the poem, uh, this is, I don't, it doesn't actually say what who translated this. And it's according to people who understand the Chinese characters that it was written in, it's really, really hard to get to this translation from the original, but I find it pretty interesting. Um, my mind that knew not its true self, my mind that wandered in the dark and deep, now is started out for Bodhi, now is awakened to light. But on my way to the city of light, I meet with a band of thieves. Their swords glitter in the bushes, things as they are and things as they are not. Well, bandits and I both meditate on the law, but is that sufficient for tomorrow? So I think I'm just gonna leave that, but also maybe say that the bandits might be our senses, uh, our sense perceptions. And um, when you hear this song um, that I'm singing in, this, in the little video, it relates with that. And I also just wanted to honor uh, Louisa Killen, who I learned this song from and she actually lived on Bainbridge for many years. And she uh, was one of the great British Isles folk singers, um, 60s and 70s movement. And she went by Lewis Killen in those days. Um, she, uh, was a trans woman, but actually didn't uh, come out until a few years before she died. And yeah, I feel like this song, hearing her sing that is really, uh, alludes to so many different layers of meaning that I, I'm i just kind of, yeah, just in awe. So um I'm really grateful to be able to share that because Louisa Killen, I always want to share more about her, but get very few opportunities. So thanks so much, Lori and Jordan, for doing this music and and JR, Tomo, and Phil. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, let's, yeah, let's start the... Let's start the video for set.
will you go? Let's see, go. And we'll all go together to the wild mountain time. All around the blooming heather. Will you go? Let's see, go. Oh, the summer time has come. And the trees are sweetly blooming And the wild mountain tongue Grows around the bloom of heaven Will you go, lassie, go? We'll all go together To pull wild mountain tongue All around that bloom of heaven Will you go, lassie, go? I shall build my love a bower by yon cool crystal fountain, and round it I will pile all the flowers of the mountain. Will you go, lassie, go, and we'll all go together to pull wild mountain time all around that blooming heather. We go, lassie, go. I will rage through the wild in the deep glen, sea dreaming. And return with their spoils to the bower of my dearie. Will you go, lassie, go? We'll all go together to pull wild mountain time all around that blooming heather. Will you go, lassie, go? If my true love shall not come, then I'll surely find another to pull wild mountain vine all around the bloom and heather. We'll go, lassie, go. We'll all go together to pull wild mountain time. All around that blue heaven Will you go, let's see, go And we'll all go together To go wild mountain vine All around the blue and heather Will you go, let's see, go We'll all go together to pull wild mountain time all around that blue heather we go lassie go we go lassie go we go lassie go
crying all the dreadful wind and rain. She threw her in the river to drown. Oh, the wind and the rain. Watched her as she floated down, crying all the dreadful wind and She drifted down to the miller's pond Oh, the wind and the rain Dead on the water like a golden swan Crying Crying all the dreadful wind and rain. Then along came a fiddler fair. Oh, the wind and the rain. I saw her body just lying there, crying all the dead. Took twenty strands of her long yellow hair. Oh, the wind and the rain made the fittest fiddle bow you ever did hear. Crying all.
made a fiddle body of her breast Oh, the wind and the rain With a sound that could melt any heart of are quite silent, each mortal at rest. As me and my true love were snug in one nest, a bold set of ruffians, they entered our cave. And force my dear jewel to plow the salt wave. I beg for my sailor as I begged for my life. But they not listen to me, although a fond wife. Saying the king must have sailors, to the seas he must go. And they left me lamenting in sorrow and woe. Through green fields and meadows we oft times did walk. And with sweet conversations of love we did talk. While the birds in the woodland so sweetly did sing. And the young 
thrushes' voices made the valleys to ring. Though my love has left me, I'll not be cast down. Who knows, but some day my love might return and will make me amends for my sorrow and strife. And me and my true love will be happy for life. my true love's hair His face A wondrous fair The the ground on where he stands Black is the color of my true
Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I forgot an important um, thank you at the beginning, which was for uh, Eric Paget, whose um, porch we played that on last Sunday, and he recorded it very kindly. Uh, true Northwest pandemic style with a lot of rain in the background. Um, and Isaac. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And of course, yeah, my son, Isaac Hansen, who uh, did the video for that. Also very kindly. Yeah. In-house videographer now. And it's quite a luxury. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, send them um, now or later or whenever. I'm going to ask if Tomo or Phil have anything they want to say about. I don't know. Oh, and looks like we still have a gat. I didn't. I thought you were gone. Um. Uh. I was. I have to say, I was surprised with when I talked to you, Tomo, and other people, and you were. Kind of like, uh, like oh, I don't really know these songs. Like it seemed, you seemed so in that, um, in this kind of lineage in a way. And so, but I, I mean, I kind of just, I, I, part of I started playing guitar as a young kid, and it was in the seventies in New York, and New York was so had so much folk music going. I was sort of like the very tail end of the big folk boom there, which lasted a long time. Maybe it's still happening in a way. But um, so I had all I had a lot of connection sort of throughout growing up with those songs, just in that way. As a, in a kind of a nerdy musician way, so I was surprised that that they also I had the same conversation with Clyde that people just haven't sort of been talking about this repertoire as much for a little bit. I think. Yeah, no. It's like a gigantic mountain of treasure there waiting for everything. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was really intimidated at first. Uh, just, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, I think I'm, uh, I, was, I was coming at it from uh, just a completely being foreign to this, to this world, you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah, just it, the melodies were so, um, they're very like mysterious to me in a way. Like I, I had to listen to it a ton of times before it made any sense to me. Yeah. And, and I loved it because I had, it, it had been a while before I had listened to music that way, kind of really intentionally and trying to follow, uh, yeah, something that wasn't immediately pleasing or, or familiar to my ears, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's kind of been happening lately in, in, in our listening habits with like streaming or whatever, you know, we just kind of stick to the familiar and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a really neat challenge in a way. Um, and uh, yeah, the week, you know, you asked me to play. It was it was right before the snow snowstorm that we had, and so I was kind of walking around outside, just listening to to your new record and to the songs that you sent me, just kind of over and over, and just kind of like rewiring my brain a little bit, you know. <laughs> and uh, it, it it was yeah, it was interesting. I started kind of like waking up. But I, I so I did the song Ran Ranadine and um it got to a point where I was just waking up every morning and just kind of playing playing through the song two or three times, you know. And then I would come out of dreams just humming it in my head. <laughs> and, oh nice, wow, wow. Uh, yeah. I, it went on for seven or eight straight days where it was oh. just every morning I until it felt like it was mine, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, because I didn't. I didn't want to just 
fake something that I did. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, they kind of do all those songs don't really tolerate. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and all the stories are so like creepy and weird too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ren Renardine also just has such a kind of a majestic melody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, do we have a drawing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's maybe hard to see because I wasn't using the right kind of pencil I wasn't attached with. I can draw way better and write way better. But it actually says, if you're wondering, um, great songs, dogs. Um, and then some of the letters are you guys. Oh. oh. Great songs, dogs. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet of you. It's great dog. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Phil, did you want to weigh in at all? Yeah, that's good. I don't know about it. You might have to sign off. It's the time for us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. We don't want to go to bed now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, let's roll that last part. So we don't go too far over. We'll go a little over, maybe. Not so much. Simultaneously, and it 
watch it disappear and glow at the same time. Weather moves across the land and doesn't have a reason. This rippling uncertainty beneath our bones is still the true state of all things. I had a dream
And nevermore shall him I know Lowlands But I'm seeking for good. 
your beauty so enticed me I could not pass it by So it's with my gun I'll guard you all along If by chance you should look for me, perhaps you not me find. For I'll be in my castle, inquire for and Sun and dark, she followed him. His teeth did brightly shine, and he led her up the mountains. Did that slide, bold red? It's a good thing I was muted. I keep the laptop. I learned an invaluable lesson about muting and uh, Zoom accoutrements because I stack the laptop on three tambourines and they all fell <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's spectacular. I, I love a tambourine <laughs> laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I was muted. It was okay. <laughs> That's how we should end the show, Lori. I think just a ball of tambourine, <laughs> real prat ball. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was. Yeah, really. Yeah, everything. Yeah, you guys are all so great, and I'm really grateful. Uh, any questions or parting comments? Or I didn't see any, any questions from the out in the world there. But uh, I'll just say thanks again, unless somebody has something else to chime in on. No question. Okay. Thanks. Looking forward to us all being together in person, hopefully before too long. But this is real nice in the meantime i really appreciate it it's really wonderful to see everybody and to meet you jordan thank you for sharing. yeah a real delight thanks everybody gorgeous gorgeousness yeah what a pleasure mm -hmm. yeah on, on behalf of town hall i want to thank everyone too this has been really fun it's you know as megan said in the green room it's not our typical programming and i just want to thank you all for being game for uh being here tonight and and letting us try this out. It was really great. Yeah. There's a lot of comments. Everybody uh, is really, really thankful and um, really appreciating it as well. So, yeah, thanks again to Xinyi for, for thinking of it and uh, making it happen. Yeah. Thanks to all you guys at Town Hall. Yeah. Um, just, I want to thank the audience too. Thanks for being here. I'll post again all the links uh, in the chat because they're kind of, all at the top now, but uh, once we get off, I'll repost those so everybody can check those out. Um, and yeah, hopefully next time we do something like this, we can all 
be in the same green room all together. <laughs> but until the then, lawn. maybe stay in safe. a lawn somewhere or something. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thanks, everybody.